Where am I taking responsibility? Where am I not taking responsibility? Where am I trading responsibility? And are my expectations in alignment with the responsibilities that I'm actually taking or not taking? You're complaining about all these problems and all these things that, that you have no control over instead of actually focusing on the one thing you do have control over, which is your own choices, which is your own thoughts, your own feelings, your own actions. Next Level Nation, welcome back to another very special, as always, episode of Next Level University, where we teach you how to level up your life, your love, your health, and your wealth. We hope you enjoyed our latest episode. It was number... 1,189 is the grass greener where you're going today for episode number 1,190. Happy Monday. One reason so many of us feel out of control. I remember, Alan, and I'm not proud of this. I'm curious yes, to see. Yes, Kevin. <laughs> I remember this, <laughs> Alan Lazarus. <laughs> and I'm not proud of this, but I'm, I'm curious to get your take because I'm sure you've probably felt this at some point in your life. After all of my breakups... In my past, I would always say, yeah, my girlfriend was crazy. She was crazy. My girlfriend was crazy. That's why it didn't work. She was crazy. Just didn't work. That kept happening, right? And it wasn't necessarily that. It wasn't necessarily this person's crazy. It was they were unreasonable. They didn't like my friends, whatever. Insert, insert excuse here. So the last breakup that I had, the one that turned me on to self-improvement and made me become more self-aware. I can't talk to save my life. We are in trouble. That <laughs> breakup, I remember after that happened, there was a short time where I said, yep, my girlfriend was crazy. And she was mean and she was this and she was that. Eventually, it got to the point where I asked myself a question. I said, Kev, all of your relationships that have failed, were they entirely your partner's fault? Yes or no? And it came to the realization that, and I've said this, you've heard me say this, all of my failed relationships are at least 50% my fault. All of them, right? I had something to do with them. It wasn't the fact that I, you know, my partner was this or that. Were they all 10 out of 10 aligned and ideal? No, probably not. Was I 10 out of 10 aligned and, aligned and ideal for them? Probably not, right? So it's not their fault. It's not my fault. It's a combination <laughs> of the two. Ellen and I are... <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need you to get it together. We're, we're burning down. For we the just team. got off a, the Next Level Hope Foundation call. We got 20 kids coming to this event. I'm freaking out. I don't know what's <laughs> going on. I got to go buy a lot more of pizza. I got to, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I like that. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. So the, the, the reason behind doing this episode is that one reason so many of us feel out of control, we're giving away responsibility. And when you give mm -hmm. away responsibility, you give away the opportunity to fix the problems you have in your life. If it's Alan's fault that I'm laughing, I can't fix that. I can't solve that. I can't improve that. But if I say, look, Alan's funny. I'm funny. We're in good moods. What can I do to change this for myself? I take back responsibility. I take back opportunity. So if you're giving away responsibility, you're giving away the opportunity to take control of your life. Boom. You've heard me talk about this before. I This is one of my favorite topics in the entire world. <clears throat> and I think that I'm probably... Uh, I think in my early life, I probably didn't take enough responsibility. And I think that I went through a phase where I took maybe more responsibility or more ownership than I probably should have. And so we've all kind of swung the pendulum either way here. So, so, you know, I'm not calling anyone out with this. But I remember learning this and I never, ever forgot it. This I think about regularly. I'm not just saying that. I think about this. I want to say, I don't want to say every day, but it's at least once a week where I consistently think about this. Yesterday I was with Emilia and she was talking about these different challenges she's having, full-time job, team, business, you name it. And I remember thinking to myself, and I, I think about this often is, well, of course, like easy climbs don't create any growth. So, so if her life wasn't so challenging, so difficult, she wouldn't be great. I remember before I met Emilia, I remember talking to Kevin back when our studio was my mom's basement. And I remember saying like, I want to be the bottleneck. In my next relationship, I want to be the anchor. I want to be the one that's holding the relationship back. I want to be the less aspirational, the less ambitious, the less goal oriented, the less future oriented one. <clears throat> I remember you saying like, who's going to have bigger goals and dreams than you? Mm. And I said, I don't know, but it's got to be out there. It's got to be out there. 
So now I, I actually have that and it's unbelievable. But one thing that I've, I've come to understand about this, this is like, there's, there's a, there's a benefit to self-belief because when you have a lot of self-belief, you really, you really are going to aim high. You're going to, you're going to explore more. You're going to do more. You're going to try more. You're going to learn more. You're going to meet more people, but you're also going to get just beaten up way more because when you, when you don't believe in yourself, and I'll bring this back to responsibility. When you don't believe in yourself, there isn't a lot of responsibility. Like, really think about this for a sec, Kev. Like, imagine for a second that you just took away all your goals. There, you have no goals. Hypothetical. Okay? Tomorrow, what do you do? Whatever I want. Okay. That's kind of my point. Now imagine you believe in yourself like you do now. And you know what's on the table if you do nothing tomorrow. And you know the life that you could have versus the life. And you really believe that you can achieve it. See, this is the duality. When you believe, when Kevin believes that he can change the world in his own unique way, that this podcast can go global and, and it is global, 140 countries and this is the very, very, very beginning. Let's say you really believe that. Now you can't just do nothing tomorrow because now you know that not only are you leaving massive impact and massive profitability on the table, but you just, it's very hard to just kind of sit there and do nothing when you know that you know that you know that you know what you're really capable of. And so this self-belief piece brings this massive amount of responsibility. It, it, it brings so much responsibility. There's three buckets. The first bucket is things that you have no control and no influence over. Okay, so I often joke... Uh, what Donald Trump tweeted yesterday, I have no control and no influence over. I don't know him, right? Whatever. I have no control, no influence. So don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Second bucket, you have no control, no direct control. I have no direct control over what Kevin does. I have no direct control over what Kevin says next, but I do have influence. I'll give you an example. If I ask him a question, hey, Kev, how's it going? Pretty good, pretty good. Okay, cool. So I knew he'd say that, <laughs> okay? That's influence. I influenced him to say that, okay? So I, I do have some responsibility there, okay? So yes, some of Kevin's success is my responsibility. That's a fact, seriously. And by the way, that's really hard. I feel that way with the whole NOU team. I, I, I feel the responsibility of all of their success and their fulfillment. Genuinely, my clients too, same deal. But that's because I have influence. I have had a lot of influence on what Kevin does and doesn't do over the last five and a half years. And so when you have control, take control. That's the third bucket. So first bucket, no control, no influence. Second bucket, influence, but no direct control. I can't control Kevin, okay? As much as I've tried, I'm joking. And then the third bucket is I have complete and utter 100% control over what I say, what I do, what I think, what I feel, and what I believe. I read a book and I think it's nonsense. I have a choice not to believe it. I read a tweet online and I think it's nonsense. I have a choice not to let it in. Or the opposite, I have a choice to believe it. So I think everything in life is about choice, particularly when it comes to what you say, think, do, feel, and believe, and most especially what you choose not to think, not to do, not to feel, not to believe. I choose Emilia every day. I choose to be a business partner with Kevin. I choose each team member. We, we choose each team member, but I am taking responsibility, my ability to respond very, very seriously. And this is one last piece I'll say. I've always particularly in my late after 26, I just took life way more seriously than other people. And you'll notice I'm a pretty intense guy. If you're out there listening, you know this. I'm, I don't like, I don't like to just kind of wing it. I, I don't, I don't like how lackadaisical people are about their own life. And then they complain why their life isn't good. It's like, that's not right. You, you're complaining about all these problems and all these things that, that you have no control over instead of actually focusing on the one thing you do have control over, which is your own choices, which is your own thoughts, your own feelings, your own actions, your own beliefs. And so, you know, you were 50% of every relationship that you were in. 
I was 50% of every relationship I was in. And a lot of it was my fault. A lot of it was not all of it. And you got to, it's very hard to discern between those buckets. And I think that's the real challenge is how do you know what you really do have control over and don't so that you actually can take the right amount of ownership? Because I've been on the side where I took very little ownership. Everything was everyone else's fault. And I don't think I was ever on the far end of that, to be honest. And I've also been on the end where everything is my fault. Every team member's choices, every everything Kevin does and doesn't do, it's all my fault. If, if NLU is losing, it's entirely on me. And honestly, a lot of that is true. And, and that's also why I work so damn hard is because I take responsibility. If NLU were to fail, that would be mostly my fault, in my opinion. Yeah, but you do take more, usually more ownership than you should. So I don't think it's, <laughs> maybe I would say it's more than most, but I don't know. I like to think I'm, I matter a little bit. Mm. <laughs> no, I'm just, you would be next. No, no, no. I, and I'm kidding. No. I'm kidding. Yeah. I appreciate no, it. That. would be a lot of your fault too. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, I, sure. I appreciate that. But I do think the level, it's weird because the level of responsibility that you're capable of taking in a way is attached to the level of self-belief you have and the, and the mm-hmm. level of impact and influence you believe you can have in a situation. So that's deep. The, the real thing that I want everybody to take away from this is how does this, I want to try to connect this to relationships. So we'll just say love. If you're in a relationship and you assume the relationship is just going to get better, you're wrong. Most likely. The only way a relationship is going to improve is if the two parts of the relationship improve. And that's where responsibility comes in. I remember what it was like to be in a relationship and say, I really hope this gets better. And then just did nothing different, never had the conversation. It was just, I assume in time this will improve. And that's just not, realistically, it's not the way it works. It's not a realistic outcome to expect. Why do you think you thought that? I didn't understand... I didn't understand what the formula for a successful relationship was. I thought it was mo- mostly by luck. And if you were meant to be with somebody, it was going to not, it wasn't just going to work out, but you'd figure it out. Now I still believe that. I believe you'll figure it out, but it has to be proactive. That's why I'm so confident in my relationship with Taryn is I know we can figure it out. And that That's it in a nutshell. Are we, do I believe that she is my soulmate and we're meant to be together. I don't know that I necessarily believe in soulmates. I believe that her and I get along really well. We're deeply in love. We want what's best for one another and we're willing to put each other first, whatever that means, for the rest of our lives. That's what I believe. And I believe that because of that love, we're willing to do the work. We're willing to show up when it's hard. We're willing to have the difficult conversations. But it's based on both of us taking responsibility. Right? When... Tara and I had the conversation of, hey, Kev, I haven't I haven't been seeing much of you lately and it's making me sad. Like, is there any way you can talk to Alan and maybe change hours around? I had to take responsibility and there's there's levels, right? Number one responsibility is, yeah, you're right. I haven't been seeing you as often. Number two responsibility is my responsibility to the business to be there. Number three, my responsibility to Alan to make F sure I'm Alan. showing up. F Alan. <laughs> no. Alan was the ninth responsibility. But, but it's it's really trying to balance all those things. The more things you're doing, the more responsibilities you have, which is why it's hard. And that's the reason why being a dream chaser is challenging because it it you can't blame the fact that the store you work at doesn't have a good location. You can't blame the fact that, oh, you know, people just aren't buying makeup or going to Home Depot as often, so work is slow. It's, it doesn't work like that. It's your responsibility now. It's not somebody else's responsibility. But you can also celebrate when you win because it's more you. It's, it's a balance. But I want you to think about it from the aspect of relationship. Where am I taking responsibility? Where am I not taking responsibility? Where am I trading responsibility? And are my expectations in alignment with the responsibilities that I'm actually taking or not taking? Hey guys, so I wanted to give a little bit of my experience about um, group coaching. I'm learning stuff, I'm applying the habits, and I have other people that's doing the same exact thing. One of the biggest things that I think I gained from group coaching is when I went through that month of being so sick, I was so determined that I would just try to do as much as I could. And I just couldn't wait until I felt good enough to get back to doing all of them. I've just seen so much growth in myself and I am so appreciative to have the group, to have, you know, that immersive experience. And I really appreciate all that y'all do. We have uh, 
person in our community who I'm very proud of. She started out as an employee of the company and she grew, grew, grew. This is over years. And eventually she became a supervisor. And now I think she supervises, she's leading a team of, I think, don't quote me on this, 11 people, maybe 12 as of, as of yesterday. But I remember, um, I got a text recently saying like, oh my God, this is amazing. Thank you so much for sticking with me through this. And I'm really grateful for those. I, I save those texts actually. But I, I essentially said like, go you for sticking through it. Because when she got promoted, this is the weird thing about success. I really hope people can understand this about responsibility. When she got promoted, my mind went, oh no. That, okay, that's awesome. It's awesome. And I was celebrating her genuinely. But there was another part of me that was like, you're in trouble. What do I mean by that? You don't go from leading no one to leading 14 people or 12 people or whatever and then not have massive pain. It's not easy to like suddenly jump that quick. Being a supervisor and getting promoted is awesome. Seriously, it's great. But it comes with way more responsibility. It's, it's now your responsibility to make sure the team is succeeding. And the weight of that is like hard to explain to someone who's not experienced it. It's, it's interesting. Um, I was talking to Amelia last night and we have someone that you and I used to know very closely and they were at a higher level of success many years ago than we were. And now that's just not true and I'm grateful because we've done very well, but I know why. This person doesn't know how to lead. I'll keep it anonymous. They just don't know how to lead a team. I coach this client. I, I, we've been close friends. They just don't know how to lead. They don't, they don't, they're like solopreneurs. And I remember thinking to myself, like, we have 19 team members now and I'm very, very grateful. But like, my mind all day, every day is like thinking, how do we make sure every team member is aligned and fulfilled and the culture is strong and we're supportive to one another but also holding each other accountable how do we make sure everyone's tracking their habits how do we make sure all the habits actually align with the mission how do we make sure that there's no one whose relationships are 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 struggling to an extent that it's going to hold back the business how do i make sure that my own life is not a mess you know it, it's it's a and it's not but it's a lot it's a lot to take on. And so this person, she's crawled through the mud and she's now ratcheted in that higher ground, so to speak, and she's doing a great job. But I remember when this first happened, I remember being like, this is a make or break situation. Like, I don't see this person as as a natural born leader. She's going to have to work at this. And that's okay. She did. She worked on it. She's studying a leadership book. And this is the real lesson. She She's literally reading a book called The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. She's taking a training on how to be a leader. Right, she's putting in the work. But for a while there, it was like she was coming home crying. You know, like my friends are treating me differently. Who used to be a, a peer is now my employee. Like there's a lot of shit that goes on with this that people don't get. People want success, but they don't want responsibility. And they do not, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. And so yeah, we're more successful than that other person, quote unquote. But we also don't get to frolic on the beach like they do regularly. And that's okay. Like, what if I was just like, you know what? I'm going to take the next month off. It's I'd like a lot might go off overjoyed. the rails. I'd be overjoyed. I'd be party. <laughs> yeah. Office party every day, son. <laughs> um, office party every day with Kev for the holidays. But and like, then you come just... back and there would be nothing here. It'd be a car. It'd be like, the wheels would be missing. The steering wheel would be gone. Be on fire. You'd have your Mercedes for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the money would be siphoned from the bank. You know, I'm joking. <laughs> Um, but that's the thing. And I, I just want to make that as clear as possible is self-belief is wonderful. Big goals is wonderful. Getting to the next level is wonderful, but the next level of results for you also requires the next level of responsibility. And you can't really have one without the other. It's a challenge. It's a challenge. This was a good episode. I'm glad we did this, but that's one of the things I see so often is people, they will not take responsibility aligned with their expectations. I remember I had I had somebody that I was buddies with a long time ago. And I remember this person would always come to me and they would say, hey, yeah, my diet's just not working. I fall off after every so so often. And I always said, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? And they said, well, I'm just kind of eating intuitively. 
And I said, okay, how is that working? And they said, well, it works for a while and it stops working. And I said, okay, why don't you try something differently? Like you have expectations, but you're, you're not taking ownership for the things that are actually going to bring you the results. Like, why don't you try something different? And I remember saying, I've been in, in fitness for a long time and I've gotten to what I think many people would consider the peak of physical condition. I mean, I did a bodybuilding show. Don't do it. It's brutal. But I have an understanding of how to do this. And even I was tracking my calories and my macros back then. Like, why, why do you get to get the result that I got without taking any of the responsibility I did? It doesn't work that way. It can't work that way. That's a broken system. It doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. And I would, I always, I would bet on the person who takes responsibility. Mm -hmm. I went on a podcast yesterday. <clears throat> I went on a podcast yesterday. I don't remember the young man's name, but he was from South Africa. And we log on and he's like, hey, thank you so much for having me on your podcast. It's awesome. I'm excited. And I was like, I think there has been a mix up here. I am supposed to be on your show. At least that's, that's my understanding. And he's like, no worries, man. Let's do it. And he hits record. We're off to the races. And he's like, just a heads up. There's some pretty serious rainstorms coming through South Africa right now. So if there's any noise, I apologize. And the level of responsibility the person took for, yeah, that was my bad for the mix up on whether or not it's supposed to be me or you. My bad for the weather. Like my bad for, I don't have like a great backdrop yet. I'm new. I said, I would bet on you a hundred times out of a hundred times. Like you're going to be mm -hmm. fine. You're going to be mm -hmm. fine because there's no you're very aware of the fact that you have to get better if you want to win. That's great. Love that. And I sent him a, uh, my link for a free call and said, let's do this. I want to help you. I want to see you win. And that's what I like. I think that's the opposite of entitlement. You're taking responsibility for what you actually want versus not getting what you want and then just saying, well, it was whatever. Insert. The economy, the blank, the blank, the algorithm, whatever. Whatever it is, right? There will always be opportunity to throw blame, but there will always be opportunity to take responsibility as well. Fire. Uh, I don't know what... Do you know my next call? Is it at 10.30? 10.30. of responsibility? Yeah. So, Kev, when we were in Toronto and Milwaukee, you called me out for being a little bit delusional with fitness. Mm. And I've since come up because of that difficult conversation. And... Kevin's seen me at peak, I wouldn't say peak levels of conditioning. I don't know if you've ever been quite <laughs> that impressed, but way more impressed than lately. <clears throat> and so I am taking responsibility for exercising consistently the 287 or 88 days as of yesterday, but I haven't been tracking my calories, right? And, and you just got me to see that I'm not playing at the level I once did. And the reason you did that isn't because you were being mean, it's because you know that that's what I want to hear because I the delusional part is kind of like expecting results without actually doing the work. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of things, right? Well, now we're business owners and we you know, now we lead a team and you know, you're not a fitness model anymore and you're not constantly getting feedback and you don't have a fitness coach anymore and x y and we don't have the time and there's a million reasons we could I mean, literally there's a reason why most business owners are not like fitness models. It's it's a full-time job straight up. But that doesn't change the fact that you know the result I want and you know I'm not going to get it if I don't get my S together. And that's what taking responsibility is. And so no one's perfect at this, but I would say be very careful at laying blame on things that are outside of your control because what happens is that takes away from the things you actually can control. And if you don't at least do, and I always ask this question to my clients. I said this to my client yesterday. Are you doing all you can with all you have? If you can say yes, I'm doing all I can with all I have, then keep it up. You're doing all you can. But if you can't say that, which none of us really can fully, then don't be upset when you're not getting the result. You know, um, I've been really getting some really hardcore workouts lately. And... I told Emilia recently, I said, fitness is coming up, but I can tell that the business isn't getting as much attention as it did before. And this is just as of late, like the last week or two. And I'm in the gym and some of these workouts, I've been doing 45 minutes now. Some of these workouts have been like really pushing past my current limits to the point where I'm like dripping sweat. I'm really in a lot of pain. It's not like comfortable at all. These workouts are bad on the higher end of bad. 
And I'm like, whatever, man, this is what, this is what it takes. And I do, I already feel better than I did. Mm. There's a reason not everyone's in shape. There's a reason not everyone's wealthy. There's a reason not everyone has their dream home. There's a reason not everyone has their dream business. Here's why. Ready? It sucks. What it takes to get it sucks. And so it's not supposed to be easy. It's supposed to be hard. If everyone took responsibility and tracked their habits and got up early and and worked hard and had self-discipline and ate properly and exercised consistently and was kind all the time and never lost their temper. And if everyone was like that, none of these things would be valuable because everyone would have them. If everyone woke up tomorrow with six pack abs, they wouldn't be valued because they'd be normal. And so these things are supposed to be hard. It's the hard that makes it great. And I think that responsibility self-discipline, ownership, these things are at the core, the epicenter of what it really takes to succeed. And, you know, if this company were to fail, it's Kevin and I's fault, period, period. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that's the truth because we have the most influence over whether or not it succeeds. And, and that's okay. That's okay. Fire. Heavy one today. Heavy one, but very necessary, I would say. Next, Level Nation. One of the things I talk about very often when I'm on other shows is the importance of the people around you. Are the people in your life the best from your past or the best for your future? I can promise you in our private Facebook group, Next Level Nation, they are for the future. They will help you get to your goals, your dreams, your aspirations, and you can be the most authentic version of yourself. That's what we're all after anyway. Link is in the show notes. Please join if you haven't already. Alan, why should I join book club? I'll tell you why. <laughs> tell them why. Uh, tell, tell them. Tell them. It's going to be a way to stay accountable and most likely read more. I know a lot of people struggle to read consistently, so it'll get you reading more because you're in a group of other people that are reading. I had a client yesterday I was on the phone with, and he has a really hard time getting around dream chasers. He's like, no one around me has big goals and dreams. Like The only person I know is my brother. And like, we hang out all the time, but I'm like lonely. I'm having a really hard time. Self-esteem is a huge issue right now. I said, brother, you got to get in the community more. I've got dream chasers all around me all the time. I'm so blessed. Book club and monthly meetups and the NLU team and all my clients and Emilia and Bianca and all these companies. I'm just constantly surrounded with self-improvement. And so it, it, it's, yes, it's challenging, but it's also awesome. And so that's why you should join book club is just being around other people that are focused on getting better. In 5, 10, 15, 20 years, you're going to look back and go, holy crap, I'm so grateful that I got around better people. And by better people, what I mean is not intrinsic, but people who are focused on getting better. People who are focused on improving, taking ownership, taking responsibility. So join book club. The link is in the show notes. And I hope to see you this Saturday. Next Level Nation tomorrow for episode number 1191. Is this one mistake holding you back? It's going to be something that I think Alan and I happen to be pretty good at, but I definitely was not always good at it. As always, we love you, appreciate you, grateful for each and every one of you. And at NLU, we do not have fans, we have family. We will talk to you all tomorrow. We'll see you at the next level.